so hey guys hey guys welcome back to the channel it's chilo here once again as always if you're seeing me for the first time my name is chioma aka chilo i'm a nigerian an african living in japan and i've been here for more than three years now sometimes eh, i'm just like how did time fly so yeah guys today's video is one video that i genuinely didn't believe that <laughs> I was ever going to make because it's a video that me myself i'm still learning on the job like i'm still a work in progress right i'm i don't even believe i am at that point where i should sit down and make a video like this but two things inspired this video the first thing is tommy's video she's actually also a black girl here in japan but she's jamaican and this video of hers was suggested to me so and i i was like yeah that's true a lot of times people have been inquisitive to know how i've been surviving in japan when i do not speak japanese fluently and the second thing that inspired this video is tabby and recently while we were talking i don't know what led to what and she made a statement she was like well come to think of you chioma you're doing well for someone that does not speak japanese language and i'm just like are you whining me now and she's like think about it yeah so today's video would be me basically telling you how i survive in japan without speaking fluent japanese language uh, I've been living in Japan for more than three years now and I'll tell you for fact and for free my Japanese is on life support I do not speak fluent Japanese before I came to Japan I did not know Jack like I didn't even know one single Japanese word that was how bad it was the more I tried to learn the more it escaped from my head so I actually came to Japan on a very clean slate <laughs> yeah so that's what today's video is about i'm going to be sharing with you seven tips in case you're looking at coming to japan or you're already in japan and you're struggling with surviving your day-to-day -day interactions hopefully these tips will help you also like i always say in most of my videos please don't try this with um, a lot of times people want to do more than they can take more like you now go to a school or uh, your lectures are purely in japanese that one i don't know and i don't support i will always tell people as much as you can please look out for you know schools that teach in that teach your course in english so that you know what you're struggling with is just interacting with the locals for your day-to-day -day activities and not necessarily your lectures so let's get right into this like i said i'll be sharing seven tips seven tips that hopefully would help improve your day-to-day -day interactions with japanese people if you're looking at coming to japan or you're already in japan let's get right into this video okay the very first tip that i'm going to give is make friends see how do you want to survive <laughs> how do you want to survive make friends especially with those people that speak fluent japanese now these people are in two categories they could be foreigners too they could be japanese people there are some foreigners like example tabi tabi speaks very fluent japanese a lot of times the reason you people see me here saying hey japan hey japan is because i have a very good tribe here like these friends would help you make some phone calls they will help you make some inquiries they would also help you keep um keep you updated to some things that you could easily miss out on i'll be giving very practical examples now if you watched my video of house hunting right i said it there that tabby was one very instrumental person in me looking for a house how so i just basically told her ah in i was like see i want to move apart so she was like, oh no problem went on the internet i think i mentioned the website for you guys in that video was searching she did the phone calls like she made the phone calls to the agents the agencies she was the one that you know com communicated with them sent the emails in japanese so many so many things my own was just to follow and my own was just to see uh, her suggestions and say oh i don't like this or oh i like this or oh i don't think this is um within my budget or something like that make friends there are so many places you can find friends like this now if you're going to a lab let me assume that you're a student and um, you're going to a lab and you're not the first um, international student there there's a like it is a possibility that the person the, the other foreign students there are not doing so bad in japanese don't go and be forming an island 
make friends secondly is maybe church a lot of foreigners in different parts of the world not just japan would always tell you that one of the first places to have a very strong community that's let's say that's if you're a christian i'm a christian so i'm talking about church in this case is church when i need some interpretations i take it to church on sunday and they will even be struggling for who i have their numbers we have a group chat so you could just drop a message there make friends in every association you go to long and short of the story make friends the second point the second point on this is look at pictures away <laughs> let me talk like some people away japanese people i double for them for that one i twirly for them they are very good with pictorial representations I don't know. I think they know how much of a struggle it can be for foreigners to live here. So they made that conscious effort to picturize, like to visualize almost everything. Japanese person will put arrow directing you to toilet, arrow directing you to plane, arrow. Like they will draw, if let's say it's goat meat you think you are buying or cow meat, they will draw the cow, they will draw the pig, they will draw cats if it is cat cereal. Like so many things look at pictures pictures have saved me <laughs> a lot especially when i go shopping so i don't eat pork meat this is not from religion or anything i just don't eat pork meat in my house in my family we didn't grow up eating pork meat so i just don't eat pork meat so um a lot of times when i go shopping the meat the the pork meat the cow meat the everything look very very similar very very similar right but what what i now do is when i want to try pick i look at oh whether they draw cow or they draw pig so look at pictures whether you're going shopping whether you're traveling my first solo trip in japan when i traveled to aomori guys pictures helped me a lot i was looking at pictures like this a lot of times you know look look out for pictures the third thing this one is you know having lived here this is something that you would you just have to pick up just pick up basic words you know i always say it on this channel that my japanese level is survival japanese and i'm never ashamed to say it now this video is in no way discouraging you from learning japanese but pick up basic japanese words when i say survival japanese is because i know basic words now and let me tell you the advantages of um let me tell you the advantages of this like i said i'll give practical examples recently i was on the train and this very elderly woman you know she saw my hairdo and she just kept staring and looking i was on my phone no? but i you know when someone is looking at you shanu and i looked up and she was just like eh, kire ne? like i knew she was talking about my hair and i just kept telling her oh arigato gozaimasu thank you and then she goes kuni this is, she was speaking something very long but sometimes when you know just one word from an entire sentence someone is trying to make it helps you understand the context it helps you understand what a, what this person is asking you or what this person is trying to say a lot of times this is one that this is the one that tops my trick after three years i may not know exactly the entire sentence but the minute i hear kuni which is country i know you're trying to ask me what country are you from and i just thought oh nigeria gene that's i'm a nigerian do you get me so a lot of times you may not understand the entire sentence but just knowing basic vocabularies would help you a lot a lot of times so sometimes just knowing basic vocabularies number one it helps you to understand what this person is trying to say to you number two it also helps you to conjoin there's something we call pidgin language in nigeria it's broken english you know it's just here and there it also helps you to conjoin here and there and reply now when i go for solo things on my own i'll just add carry one word carry one word do this word join it like this join like this i've made a sentence and most times to be very fair and honest with you they know you don't speak fluently so they appreciate that effort and they, they, will, they will talk to you like they really you spoke one very amazing japanese so as much as possible as you are as soon as you're landing like i said i didn't know any vocab when i came as soon as you come as much as possible pick it here and there pick it here and there little little words well long and short is learn basic vocabularies okay all right number four number four number four is body expression gestures body expression before i came to japan i don't know if i was this kind of person that talks with her hand i can't remember myself it's almost like it's been a while 
but coming to japan has made me a eh, like this like that like somehow it just comes naturally if you watch my videos where i communicate with uh, i i collaborate with japanese people you you see that it comes to play so much i'm just like you know learn to express to them you know how one thing with not knowing a language is you're like a child and the same same thing thing goes to the person that is listening to you the person is like a child so let's say I assume i'm communicating with a japanese person that doesn't understand english this is like a child so i'm trying to you know describe what i'm saying the same way the person is trying to describe what he's saying to me too because i don't understand japanese so you both are like children that you're trying to explain to a lot of time body gesture helps me a lot i'll give a very practical example when we we're doing the house hunting one of the agents called Tabby and the person goes, oh, the landlord is quite, you know, curious to know about this black girl or this foreigner you're trying to introduce to his property. Does she speak Japanese? And Tabby found that question really difficult for some funny reasons. She's like, she doesn't speak Japanese, but I doubt you will have an issue with her. I laughed. I'm like, why? Don't say that. She's like, she knows words, survival words, and she's very good with expressing herself with her body. So I doubt it would be an issue. I didn't even know that, you know, people have noticed that about me too. So learn to express yourself. Another example that happened was I was trying to gist my a lab member about what happened in the train, the woman that saw my hair and was just all over. She was literally so excited. So I was trying to gist the lab member. I see what happened. And um, there is this elderly woman so they called them Obasan, but I didn't know, I didn't remember the word for, you know, a grandmother in Japanese. So I was telling this woman, um, and in Yonjin saw my hair, she was like, um, um, I, I can't remember, but I just found myself now doing like this, like literally describing an elderly person. And then she goes, oh, Obasan. I said, yes, Obasan. That's an, a grandmother. So learn to express yourself. It is fun. See, don't take yourself too seriously. That is something I feel like a lot of foreigners need to hear over and over again. Don't take yourself too seriously. You're not the first person that cannot speak it and you won't be the last that they have seen. I've seen that it is paying forward, like it pays back forward to me because even them now, when they are trying to speak English to me and they are making an attempt, especially in school, they are trying so hard, they don't, they are not, they feel like they're not getting, I see them, you know, making the whole, you know, um, body gesture and I, and then I'm like, I get what you're trying to say, stress it no further. So learn, you know, body gestures. So that's number four, right? Number five, number five, number five, number five, number five is make use of, um, make use of um, translating apps, you know, like Google Translate, Deep Learning, a lot of translating apps and use download. Sure that should be the first thing you do. <laughs> Even before you land Narita or Japanese Japan airports from abroad, please, that's the first thing you should do. Download the app. Now, a lot of times when people use translating apps, I, I for one, the longest one I've been using is Google Translate. One of the common mistakes foreigner make, foreigners make with this app is they think it is only just text to translation or voice to translation. What I mean is if you type English word, it translates to Japanese and then you can show the person, oh, this is what I'm trying to say. Or you can speak into it and then it translates to Japanese and you show the person, oh, this is what I'm trying to say. But those are not the only features. You can actually, like sometimes if I receive a mail in my mailbox and I want to know, is this confidential or is this something that I would take to the lab for translation? I use the picture. So there's a camera and um, feature too on the google translate app i just turn it and even if i can pick one word so the same thing with just picking a word it helps you understand the entire context if i pick a word i'll pick i'll say oh this is gas it's gas gas uh, meal so i can take it to the lab oh help me interpret it or maybe this or this is electricity um because i like to um sort out my meals confidential and non-confidential so there's the camera um, feature to which you can you know translate an image 
or there is the one we can import an image already that you've snapped so make use of all those features they are very readily available the sixth point the sixth point guys is make use of the city office make use of your prefecture office make use of the city office i'll say it over and over again a lot of times because they understand that this could be a challenge to foreigners even though you're being taught in english you know your day-to-day -day life so there are usually these people that are paid their work is translation so they work with a lot of foreigners most times they are so fluent in english like so make use of them they are very they are very available for you they're free of charge you just go to the office there and ask oh you want to meet a translator and they will direct you to the person so make use of them so many times people don't even know that these people exist they could help you make phone calls too if let's say like there was a period that okay a practical example there was this period that tabby was very very busy and no not that she was busy. she traveled to singapore for holiday for a vacation and so i i was a bit stranded not stranded stranded i just needed someone who was very very strong in english to help me with something i just took the things to the city center and i met this woman met her and then she helped me like interpret it make some phone calls that were necessary and that was how i was able to sort that make use of city centers or your prefecture office go there and go and ask oh please you're looking for translators when you get the tra translator ask for the number please make use of um, those people um, that are already paid for your service and the last point this is the seventh point number seven is no basic cultures traditions believe know the basic japanese culture tradition and this is one thing that i think the embassy of japan in nigeria tried for us during the orientation during the orientation they tried to you know talk us through some basic cultures you know how japanese people behave in some situations some some things that could be seen as disrespect just know the basic things nobody is going to the truth is japanese people have this attitude of giving you a benefit of doubt because you're a foreigner but that doesn't mean you should stretch it too thin and then do the direct opposite there are some things that i would do now and my professor would just be like this one is a foreigner she doesn't even know what she's doing but there are some things that it could come off as rude and insultive so how do you do this check on youtube i'm so happy that there are a lot of black people these days coming out to speak about their experiences go on youtube type blacks in japan type nigerian in japan just go on youtube you know foreigners in japan foreign students in japan they are sharing their experiences on a weekly or on a daily basis read up on it or watch it listen to their experience and know what to know and see what to see also check on google there are a lot of resources on the internet and another thing is read materials just read 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 just try to equip yourself with at least the basic knowledge i hope this video is helpful once again there are actually pros and cons definitely you will still have challenges here and there one tip again is don't take yourself too seriously some days it will hit you hard it will hit you really hard but then hopefully these tips is going are going to help you and then know when to just concur and uh, this one is bonus tip know when to concur and just end a conversation there are some things that someone is talking to me i can't pick a word i can't pick vocabulary your gestures are not helping all these tips i'm saying are not helping you know what i just do i'll just say on tour because japanese people do a lot of that yeah. more like really are you serious or oh, really so that's what i just do in the lab eh if you're speaking because a lot of times japanese people forget especially when they've noticed that you are very friendly and you flow well with them in conversations even when you're not understanding they now forget that this person is not good they will not be speaking and going so what i now do sometimes i now be like eh on tour he ends it and a lot of times tabby is the one that used to catch me she'll just tap the person and say she does not understand <laughs> and i'm just like what do you want me to say so yes guys don't take yourself too seriously at the end of the day you will realize that i mean you're clocking years you see you've improved i've actually really improved if you're already here and you don't speak fluent japanese aya tell me in the comment section how has it been also if you're in a country even if it's not japan that do not speak you know english or english is not their first language. let me not say do not speak because you still see people that speak but english is not their first language i mean you europe a lot of countries in europe a lot of countries in asia 
tell me in the comment section are you fluent with their language and if you're not fluent in their language what are your survival tips like thank you guys so much for watching as always i remain your girl chino talks and i hope to see you next time on chilo talks bye for now guys